Right, how's it going? It's me, Shotty4HF, and I wanted to do a really quick video on this free plugin called R and ARP. Okay, so it's an arpeggiator, and I was looking for one of these because even though some instruments, um, you know, some virtual instruments like FM8, for example, they have their own arpeggiator built in. Just like that. And, um, you know, for, for those that might not know, an ar arpeggio is... Um, basically where you have the notes of a chord or you hold down the notes of a chord and an arpeggio is those notes played in quick succession in you know either up or down or whatever um, but an arpeggiator will do that for you when you hold down the notes on a keyboard it will play those notes in quick succession in the order that you choose so that's kind of what it does and it's a really handy thing for just creating melodies that kind of thing and sort of you know adding something to a track so again you know some virtual instruments do have an arpeggiator built in like this one which is built into FM8 and okay that's okay but what I wanted was uh, an arpeggiator that I could use with different virtual instruments so any instrument basically I could load it in and um, you know sort of have that effect now I'm using Cubase and in Cubase it does have some built-in arpeggiators um, which are MIDI inserts like for example here I've got Apache loaded up um, going to uh, just a massive patch I'm just using massive because it's fairly sort of basic and straightforward and yes with this Apache 5 and then I think there's the Apache SX as well there's also other things you can use like um, the step designer that kind of thing but they're all MIDI inserts and they're fairly basic stuff you know what i mean that they're, they're, they're quite limited um with what they can do um and i'll just give you an example of this it's apache 5 connected to massive and obviously all i'm doing there is holding down the chords and it's playing those notes in sequence so anyway i came across this thing called r and arp and it's quite good and it's free so I wanted to sort of show you how I set it up and uh, just have a quick look at it and then what I'll do is I'll show you uh, a new track that I've made pretty much using R and R <laughs> all the way through certainly on a lot of the elements in the track anyway so first things first when I loaded up the instrument I should say well this was a surprise to me because when I downloaded R and R I it wasn't an effect and it wasn't um, a MIDI insert. It was in fact, it was in fact a virtual instrument. It was in the list of virtual instruments. Um, you know, the same with every everything else like uh, FM8 and Massive and whatnot. And there it is. So I thought, well, that's interesting because how can I get that to then trigger another instrument if it is an instrument itself? If that makes sense. Um, but I soon kind of figured it out. I loaded up R and Arp and. Let's have a quick look at it. This is it. It just loads up this this panel here um, with obviously uh, various functions and effects on it. And then I thought, right, well, how do I get that then to trigger, for example, Massive, which I have loaded up here. And it's all to do with MIDI routing. And in Cubase, I'll show you how I do it in Cubase. Obviously, it might be different in other DAWs, um, but this is basically what I did anyway. On Massive, I went up here. And I looked at the MIDI input, and it's at the at the minute it's on all MIDI inputs. So when I press my keyboard, um, you know, I will trigger massive um, because it's it's responding to that. So in this list for <clears throat> the MIDI inputs for massive, I realised that when you have um, uh, an instance of R and ARP loaded up. It will appear in this list with R and ARP MIDI out. So I set that as the input to massive. The R and ARP MIDI out set as the input to massive. So now it all depends on what this thing kicks out as to what is going to trigger massive. So basically, um, for the example, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some MIDI chords, um, which I've just drawn there. You know, it's C minor. Um, and just going through a couple of other chords there. And I'm going to put that onto R and ARP. Okay. Now remember that the MIDI out of R and ARP is now set to the MIDI input of Massive. So when that plays,
Okay. So that is R and up now triggering massive. So the chords, you don't put the chords onto massive, you put the chords onto, you know, the MIDI notes onto R and up onto that lane. Um so this is where it starts to get interesting, obviously, you know, because I can um, you know, choose a different sound. Let's find try and find some sort of plucked sound. Um something like this, and then play that again. And that's quite fast, but let's have a quick look at R and R and see what it's got in there. Um, so you've got the rate, obviously. Um, so you can slow it down. You've also got dotted and triplets in there um, for the, the sort of timing. And I really like the sort of um, you know the the triplet timing. Um, on the arpeggio, it's it's really good, and then obviously in note order, and there's a lot of choice in here. Um, there's even things like random, so it's just uh, you know totally scattered as to what notes it plays first. You can go up, then down with an octave, or you can just go up and down in the same octave. Um, you've got cross, you've got random once, random octave, all all these different um, sequences and note orders. Uh, which just makes it a really interesting tool, especially you know when you're maybe you're not in the in the mood to write melodies and you just want to come up with something that really sort of fills out that background um, and just add a little bit of instrumentation to a track. I pretty much like to leave it as it is. The only thing I take down sometimes is the octave, so I just have it on one octave, um, and then let's change you know some of these. And again, it's just down to sort of experimentation, really. Um, Let's have a quick listen to this. Of course, you know, and that's that's a, about it. But the beauty of this is that you can route it to any other instrument. Obviously, change the rate. Um, let's try cross. Um, random. You can change the number of octaves that it goes across. And it even has a, a swing variable there to sort of, you know, make it a little bit offbeat and interesting. And that's it. But for free, it really is quite versatile and it has everything you need for an arpeggiator. And, you know, again, I could I could now change this um, instrument to something else. Um, you know, the vinyl guitar um, plug in. Let's just have a quick listen to it on that. Um, and it should do pretty much the same thing. So again, any instrument, you can just set the MIDI out of R and ARP to the MIDI input of any virtual instrument, and there you go. You have your arpeggios for that instrument. So, so that's it. R and ARP. It's a great free plugin. Check it out if you're looking for an arpeggiator. Then definitely check this one out. It is definitely worth it because it's free. Okay, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to sort of show you how I set it up in Cubase and just kind of show you basically how it works. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll leave you with a track that I made using this on quite a few elements in the track. Um, it's called Weekend on Neptune, and it's actually coming out, I think, the 1st of March. Um, this track will be out. Um, but anyway, I'll leave you with that. Have a listen. Um, if you like this video or if you found it useful, please give it a like um, and let me know in the comments. And also please do subscribe because I will be making many more videos like this. So that's it for now. Take it easy. Keep creating. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.